Hello? What happened? Police. I don't know. This house is big. I don't know where my little cousin at. So can you please? Where is the three-month-old baby? Ba the baby lady. The baby is on my mama kitchen counter with his head smashed. Now, what? I need you to please send me. Okay, is it a male or female? I'm eating. What the f***? Where my little cousin is at? Now, if I go a girl pop up with a weapon, I'm not going to have a little cousin no more. So can you please? I know, I know this car is off. Can you please just send the police? As disturbing as this find was, there was something even more terrifying lurking nearby. The killer was hiding somewhere in the house. Look, is the baby breathing? Listen, lady, the baby is deceased. Okay, okay. All right, we're sending the police and an ambulance, okay? Uh, mama. What is her name, sir? Mama, son. Hello. What is your name? What's happening here, 20-year-old Deasia Watkins and her boyfriend James Brown welcome the- Pause chat, did you see that Twitter video? That 19-year-old girl who gave birth and then the mom came in the room and was like, where's the baby? And the nurse is like, where's the baby? Bro, she just threw the baby in the garbage and it was dead. And the nurse came in and was like, we found a dead fetus, like a dead baby in the trash. Did you throw it out? She was like, yeah, it was crying. I didn't know what to do. Bro, what the f That, bro, that shit had me so tight. That shit had me so tight. 20 year old DeAsia Watkins and her boyfriend James Brown welcomed their healthy baby girl, Janiah Watkins, on December 4th, 2014. At first, everything seemed to be going well for the couple. Okay. DeAsia was excited to become a mother, and after a tough childhood of her own, she vowed to give her child the love she'd never received. Okay. But no one would have ever predicted the sheer horror that lay ahead. It all began when Cheviot police were dispatched to the apartment where the family was living on January 25th, 2015, right. around midnight. Upon here, let's pause right here, right quick, Jack. Let's analyze that message. Let's dissect it. Let's comprehend this message right here. Rage, you built like December 4th. What does that mean? How am I built like December 4th? Pipe me. Like, what's happening? What does the f does that mean bitch like i'm curious tell me what it means type an answer now i'm not starting the video what does that mean hurry up your mess your your it, it's your time to shine this is what you asked for this is what you want huh now reply what does this mean stop laughing in the corner of the room with your titties out with your little nipple hard as f tell me what it means type something bitch bodied my idol you know, you just built like it. Yo. Yo, I'm not going to lie. I was mad comfy in my bed watching Jesh. Then I hear my mom screaming, telling me to get my dogs before the tree that is about to break kills them. LOL, I thought I was getting robbed for a second. Shit had me in shambles. I hate my chat sometimes. What? Who? What? What are these individuals in my chat? What are y'all? Hearing Deasia's screams and baby Janiah's cries, multiple neighbors had become very concerned and placed 911 calls. Police soon arrived Real at the niggas. residence. However, DeAsia refused to open the door. The when officers threatened to force entry into the apartment. A young man opened the door, who okay. was soon determined to be James' cousin, Chris Gully. Okay. Right away, members of law enforcement That's detect- the type of shit you be saying, silly. You built like blank, you built like a face ass. Nigga all about a body build, don't you see it? I don't know what you're talking about. That a strong odor of marijuana and noted DeAsia's behavior seemed erratic. Okay. According to official case notes, as an officer tried to take Janiah out of DeAsia's arms in fear for the baby's safety, DeAsia allegedly attempted to choke Janiah, who was only a mere seven weeks of age. EMTs were called to the scene to perform welfare checks on both DeAsia and Janiah. They what? eventually managed to take Janiah. And DeAsia immediately passed out on the floor. Pause chat. Train Rex DMs me at 11.52. Bro, what are you wearing on your head? It looks like you're waiting for Tyrone to come in and hit it from the back. Up against the glass window. Tyrone? Out of all names you could have chose, you chose. Why Tyrone? Uh, 
train? Why you chose Tyrone? Interesting. Though the cause of her having lost consciousness is unknown, she was soon moved to Deaconess Hospital for psychiatric Next. care where she would remain on a 72-hour investigative hold. By the following day, her diagnosis had been established. She was suffering from postpartum psychosis. What? In addition, marijuana was found in her system, though she denied using it initially. She was placed on an antipsychotic medication. Due to side effects associated with the medication, Deasia was informed that she would have to discontinue nursing Janaya. And based on Deasia's behavior, staff expressed concern to the caseworker that Deasia didn't seem to be grasping the seriousness of the situation. According to case notes, they felt that she was minimizing the incident as she described it as no big deal. By January 30th, Deasia had returned to the apartment and a safety plan was officially in place. Okay. She was allowed supervised contact with Janaya, okay. provided Deasia took her prescribed medication and that either James or his sister Jalisha was present at all times. All right. But a visit from the caseworker reinforced the fact that Deasia wasn't on board with the plan. She hadn't filled the prescription for her antipsychotic medication. The caseworker reiterated that it was imperative Deasia take her medication or it wouldn't be safe for Janiah to stay in the home. James made it clear that she'd have to leave the home if she didn't comply, as the apartment lease was allegedly under his name. Deasia reluctantly agreed. She didn't want to be separated from Janiah, and in addition, she felt she had nowhere else to go. Of course, soon these concerns would no longer be relevant, as disaster was lurking just oh, no. around the corner. Oh, no. One week later, a caseworker completed an unannounced visit at the residence and was unable to verify if Deasia had filled her prescription. Over the next couple of was weeks, of no everything joke? continued to deteriorate. By the end of February, Deasia had abandoned the apartment and moved in with an aunt. Okay. It was clear that the current situation wasn't working and it was about to become exponentially Bro, worse. What the fuck is about Custody happen? proceedings began on March 6th. As paternity had not been established and a mental health assessment needed to be completed on Deasia, the magistrate who presided over the hearing granted custody Nine to the Hamilton up, County bitch. Department of Jobs Broke and Family bitch. Services. Fuck you. During the interim, Janaya was placed in the care of Deborah Stewart, Deasia's aunt. Neither James nor Deasia were allowed to see Janaya, and Deborah agreed to the terms. Mm -hmm. During the caseworker's visit to her home, she confirmed that she'd not allowed the during, <clears throat> during, during, during the caseworker's visit. During, 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 but in actuality, things weren't at all as they appeared to be. Nor as Deborah claimed. Nor as Deborah claimed. Nor as Deborah claimed to be. Things weren't as old as they appeared to be. Deborah, after the co-worker left, was seen on them to be. You see, Deasia had been spending time with Janiah, a lot of time actually. She'd moved into Deborah's home days earlier. Deborah was coping with her own personal issues and health oh. problems. Caring for a baby on her own was just too much to handle. So Deborah allowed Deasia to stay, despite the fact that she'd explicitly agreed not to allow her contact with Janaya. Cooked, GG. Three days Gigi. after the caseworker's visit, a life came to a shockingly brutal end within the confines of Deborah's walls. A dispatcher received the frantic 911 call early that morning. Robert. I'm sorry, I want to address of your emergency. Somebody please send the police. Please. Oh what is God, the address? Help me. I'm 59, 57, Wildwood. Okay, help me. Oh and who were you just talking to? You were just talking to somebody. Who were you just talking to? My son. He came over here. He found the I was asleep. Ma'am, you weren't crying when you, but I heard you talking to him. You were fine. And then when I picked up, you started crying. I need you to tell me what's going on. The dispatcher is trying to make sense of the situation, but so far, nothing is adding up. And her skepticism is evident. Oh, my God. Help me. Listen to me. Listen to me. I need you to stop. Stop crying, okay? Stop crying. 
I need, you to tell, I need you to take a deep breath and tell me what happened. All I know is my son came in here and woke me up and said, Mom and the baby's dead. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Here, talk to my son, brother. Come on, do I get it? How about old is the baby? The baby is three months. Oh, my God, I'm going to jail. Deborah passed the phone off to her son, Robert who'd arrived at the home along with his children just minutes earlier. It was his youngest child who had arrived in the kitchen first and bore witness to the terribly gruesome scene. Robert had immediately ushered his children out of the house to safety, then re-entered, desperate to locate his mother, Deborah. Hello? What happened? Police. I don't know. This house is big. I don't know where my little cousin is. So can you please? Where is the three-month-old baby? Ba the baby lady. The baby is on my mama's kitchen counter. The Asia was nowhere to be found, and Robert feared she might have been in danger or had potentially been killed as well. Okay, we. I need to know what happened to the baby. I don't know what happened to the baby. I came into the house. She told me. Came into the house. The baby was on the counter. My mom was in the bed asleep. I woke my mom up and we called you. That's all I know. I don't know nothing else. Don't okay, know okay, else. okay. Listen to me. Listen to me. Look. Is the baby breathing? Listen, lady. The baby is deceased. The first two officers arrived a few minutes later and immediately entered the home. One officer. I'm so lost. Okay. <clears throat> There's a mama of a child. The mama of the child is not found, right, Chet? Her baby's dead on the counter. And the person who's staying where her son found the baby. And so the, the lady woke up and saw the baby dead as fuck. And it, the baby's supposed to be under her watch. And the baby's dead. With this, with, and then, and then her, she called her older son over to come help. The older son is explaining what happened made his way to the kitchen and quickly confirmed that baby Janaya was deceased. Simultaneously, the second officer located Deborah. But they can't find the mother of the baby. Like, where is she? The bathroom of the master bedroom. Officers on scene radioed for additional officers to assist. Amidst the chaos and confusion, a few officers cleared the home and in the process, they located DeAsia. She was in the bed in her room, Tucked under the covers, though her hair remained visible. Officers pulled the covers back, and DeAsia, without so much as a word, was handcuffed and moved to the hallway and remained under the watch of another responding officer. What the fuck wrong with that crazy ass bitch? What do you mean under the covers? What does that even mean? The rest of the home was cleared without incident. As Deborah's house had become a crime scene that would require thorough processing, the parties were moved to the criminal investigation section, known as CIS, at the local Cincinnati police station. It was there that everything began to unfold, but it would take some time to get to the horrendous truth hidden beneath a cluster of outrageous lies. <laughs> This isn't the mother of the baby. This is the one that's supposed to be supervising it. Supervising the baby. Somebody help me! Somebody help me! <laughs> Bro, this is... Bro. It's like, chat's so Chat, shut, yo, I hate, oh my god, I hate this shit, oh my god, <laughs> I hate, yo, chat, this, 
Yo, y- y'all are doing, y'all are going to hell. Y'all are going to hell. Y'all are going to hell. Y- y- y'all are going, y'all are going to hell. What the hell is wrong with y'all? She, she cried like Bruce laugh. Stop. Nigga, so as you know, I, y'all made me laugh. Not this. I'm not laughing at her. She bounced. <laughs> Yo, no, I can't, I can't, yo, shut up, shut up, shut up, no, Dennis, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, it's not, no, 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 it's not, it's not, I am so sorry. I am so sorry. I am so. It's because you stupid nigga said the Bruce thing, bro. If I didn't. If y'all never said that. Yo, I hate you niggas, bro. I I did what left. I read y'all. Yo, I am so sorry. I am so sorry, bro. I'm not trying to laugh at this. Cries can be heard from the nearby room where Deasia is seated, waiting for detectives to enter. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. You trusting a bitch looking like Eve like she just went Super Saiyan 2 with a baby? <laughs> she look like a crackhead. First of all, she look like I show speed. Like, you just can't even do it. Meanwhile, Deborah is beyond inconsolable. Alex, stay for the five gifts. Dude, my little brother just killed me. I can't take it. I don't think I can live through this. I don't think I can live through this. Oh, God, I can't live through this. Oh, no. Oh, I can't do it. I can't do it. Oh, baby. Chat. I hate yo. Li- I literally can't look at chat. I literally can't. I. Why did you just type this? I can't. I can't. I can't look at chat, bro. I can't look at these niggas, bro. I can't look at you niggas, bro. I can't, bro. Y'all niggas is going to hell. Stop. For real. Lock the fucking. Be serious for once, bro. More than two hours pass before detectives enter the room where a stoic Deasia remains seated. Hi. Hi, hey, Dee My name's Jen. This is Jake. Are you handcuffed? Would you be more comfortable if I took those off? Right away, Deasia sets the tone for the interview. Yeah. She doesn't speak or respond to detectives. What hand do you write with? You write or left handed? Okay. Are you right or left handed so I can uncuff the other hand? Just forget it. Jake's going to read something for you, okay? Just pay attention to him. All right. The detective reads Deasia her Miranda rights. Yeah. It all starts. This is why I'm a feminist. Let me let me tell you something. Everything is a man's fault. Men are the problem. 
This would have happened if a horny motherfucker ain't put his dick in this little demon looking motherfucker right here. How you even how do you even want like niggas are so down bad and thirsty. They just fucking and busting in anything, my nigga. Really watch what you putting your seat in, bro. Like dead ass, dog. Like what are you doing? Y'all niggas just horny as fuck for no reason. Now you want to blame everything on, on, on the females. You want to blame all the OnlyFans and the porn on the females. You are the consumer, bitch. It's your fault. It's you. You are the problem that you complain about, bitch. You understand all that? Do you understand what I read to you? Or do you have any questions on it? But do you not want, do you not want to talk to us? Diddy. Yo, she looks scary, bro. Like, she look like any second she just go, <laughs> some shit, bro. She looks scary. You okay? Do you not want to talk to us at all? Diddy. How do you spell your name? Spell your name. Can't help you if you don't talk to me. A bit. Okay. I want to make sure you get the help that you need, and I can't do that without even knowing who you are. All I know is you go by DD. So how do you spell your name? But Deasia refuses to sign off on the form to acknowledge that she has received and understands her rights. That's tough. We're gonna take some pictures of you, okay? And we're gonna do some other clubs. I would like to sit down and talk with you and be able to see what you need that we can help you with. But I can't do that unless you talk back to me. Despite the detective's efforts to elicit a response from DeAsia, they are unsuccessful. Shortly thereafter, a team arrives to handle photographs. Did you go ahead and stand up? Stand up. You have gloves on? Yeah. Make her stand up. Go ahead and stand up. Touch that little rotor with gloves, bro. They said, yeah, she don't even want to touch that little shit. What the fuck? Not gonna lie, boomer. <laughs> bro, chill, bro. Nigga said, beat her ass. Let's, uh, let's do some pictures right now. What is that fit? What is that fit? Let's, uh, let's... Do some pictures right now. Just sure. need proper and right there. Oh, oh my god. No dead ass like you niggas is down bad. Nigga said I'm Dante. Okay. What the fuck? That's a demon, bro. Damn, bro. Like, that just makes me sad. Like, there are babies that have no say in what the fuck happens to them being raised by, like, creatures like this, bro. Like, you could just tell there's something that we don't know about, bro. Several minutes later, the photographs have been taken. And Deasia's clothing has been confiscated and retained as potential evidence. How the fuck they shit a little bit? You drink any of your water? Bro, this is how some of my homies used to be off the Zam, bro. This is why I hate Zam. Like, like, anybody that mentions Zam to me. Like, anytime I was with, the, like, some niggas. They were dead ass just on some zombie shit. Like, I, I I went to a buffet with some niggas. I ain't gonna say no names or nothing. But, like, just know, at the buffet, literally at the buffet, we get there, everybody talking. I get up to get my food, I come back. I wait a nigga up. Just dead. Just dead. Dead. Forehead all up in the sushi. 
Upon re-entering the room, the detectives continue to run through the gamut of classic interrogation tactics, but each proves ineffective. Nearly six hours in, they've gotten nowhere with DeAsia, and the meeting comes to an end. Own, After the unavailing attempt to gain information from DeAsia, she was transported to Deaconess Psychiatric Unit, where, yet again, she received treatment and was kept for observation. Three days later, she's back at the station, seated in front of detectives. And, as you're about to see, this interview is in stark contrast to the one that took place previously. You handcuffed? Yes. Me, uh, I'm take them off. Do you write left or right-handed? Oh, right-handed? Right and I'm going to read you a form here in a second, okay? I'm going to ask you to sign it saying that I wrote it, that I read it off to you and that you understand what's not, okay? Once again, the detective reads DeAsia her rights. This time around, she signs the form, acknowledging that she has received and understands her Miranda rights. After some general questions, the detectives begin to work toward untangling the terrible mess that led to an unthinkable tragedy. Why she look like duck in that fit in that recent Mercic video? Um, <clears throat> so we're gonna talk to you about stuff that She either was high as fuck, too. She either was, uh, or she just devised a plan in her head or some shit, an alibi or some story that she can make up so she feels confident. I don't know. Or she was in shock or some shit. I don't know. The other day. What I'd like to do is just go back, okay, bef way before any of that. We talked to James a little bit. You know, how'd you guys become boyfriend girlfriend? We just got to know each other. I did not expect her to have a high pitched voice. How long ago did you guys get that place together? Was that before you were pregnant or while you were pregnant? While I was pregnant. Was he working anywhere? Yes. Where did he work at? Hey, at some point, once you had the child, you guys went back to the house where you and James were staying together, right? So you guys went back there after after you left the hospital? Okay. Um, at some point in January, the police were called to that house there. Do you remember all that? No. You don't remember that very well? No. Um, do you remember after the police were called there? Like at that point, they had taken you up to the hospital then? Had you evaluated, and then you were able to go back home. Do you remember all that? Well, at some point, after I talked to James, he said that you moved out of that place and went to stay with one of your aunts. W which aunt did you go to stay with? My aunt Debbie. Aunt Debbie? During Deborah's interview three days earlier, her sister Cindy assisted in answering questions posed by the detective and addressed this very topic. She called my sister one day about a couple of weeks ago, asked her, can she come and get her? My sister said, she's sick, she can't see. <laughs> my sister said, I can't drive. I shouldn't be driving because I'm sick right now. <laughs> she was crying so hard, like, please, ain't that be coming get me? And she went and got her. So she came, according to, according to James, she came and helped pack you up and help move your stuff over there? Yes. Okay, so you were staying there, like, during why the stuff was going on at, with the court between you and the baby and James. Like, they're trying to establish yeah. him as the father. Why, why wasn't he on the birth certificate? Did you guys have some type of fight or? Yeah. No. His own ID had expired. He had an ID, but since it was expired, they said they couldn't do it. So he couldn't sign the birth certificate because of that? Yes. Okay. Though James had expressed his fear that Janaya could potentially be taken from him due to this unfortunate issue, He'd failed to file for custody. The detective shifts to another important okay. subject. When you went to stay with your aunt, were you taking medication then? Uh, yeah. Oh, fuck. Hey, them, 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 hey, them other motherfuckers would have said, yo, W girl. The Matrix was trying to control her with that medication. I wouldn't have to take the medication either. Where did the medication come from? You don't know what's in the medication. The medic. It's not real life, bro. Like, shut the fuck up, bro. Like, it's not real life, bro. All you niggas that say shit like that, y'all are just brain dead fucks, bro. You know the type of niggas I'm talking about. You know the side of the internet I'm talking about, bro. L medication. <laughs> Weren't taking any medication. Were you supposed to be taking some? Yeah. Hey, what shit like this happens is what? Why didn't you want to take it? 
Basement. Just didn't. Okay. How long were you staying there? Oh, no micro trips, yeah. Before the baby came and stayed there. Two weeks. Like, like, I, why, like, why do you think the why? I'm not about to get into you. Then the court gave custody to your aunt Debbie, right? Yes. While it appears that DeAsia is clearly under suspicion, perhaps not everything is as it seems. Yeah. I, I was down there talking to one lawyer. I come back and they don't talk to her into eating the baby. And my niece and them, they talk to her into getting the baby, hit her lawyer. And I was, I didn't know what was going on. I just said, we are all pitching in help because I work. And she's, she's retired. So I said, well, I'll, you know, pitch in. So I was like, no, we don't, to, we don't want her to go into foster home. Cindy explained that her sister Deborah was hesitant to take on the responsibility of caring for Janiah. It seems she felt obligated to head the effort though she wasn't equipped to handle everything that came along with it. Maybe that had an impact on an extreme action she'd take in a matter of just a split second. Damn. One she'd come to desperately regret. Okay. She got the baby. And it wasn't going on. Yes, she was supposed to be around. Maybe that was part of the rules. Yeah. That's what I see me. Oh, my God. Before you ended up with the police. Oh, my God. How long were you there with the baby? Um, About eight days. Okay. So the, the night the police ended up getting called to the house, we had talked to your aunt, Debbie, and she said when she went to bed that she gave you the baby. She said her eye was hurting her real bad. She was trying to take her medication. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. And she said she passed the baby off to you. Is that correct? Yes. And with this line of questioning, everything begins to shift in an unnerving direction. Um, the night after, the night when all this happened, the police came, and you had the baby in your room. Was the baby sleeping in a crib, in the bed with you, in the chair? What, where was the baby at? The crib. Was in a crib in your room? Yes. Uh, one of the things we saw in the bedroom was a broken lamp. Do you remember how the lamp got broken? Yeah. Obviously, at some point, something bad happened with the baby. Okay. Do you remember what happened? No. What? What do you mean, no? What do you mean, no? With the baby. This is the picture. Okay. Do you remember what happened? No. How did the baby get into the kitchen? I don't know. I don't know. So that was your plan for them two days you was in that mental facility? Just say you don't know? That, that, was, that, was, that, was, that was the plan? Some people just associate during shit? I don't know. I don't know if that's this, bro. I don't know if that's this. Could be, though. Could be, but we'll see. Do you think Aunt Debbie did something to the baby? Yes. Nope, she ain't disassociate shit. She ain't disassociate shit. She ain't disassociate shit. She ain't disassociate shit. She knows what's going on. She knows what's going on. She knows what's going on. You think it was Aunt Debbie? Yes. What do you think she did? The idea was unfathomable, but the alternative was even more unimaginable. Aside from Janaya, DeAsia and Deborah were seemingly the only individuals in the home around the time that the terror ensued. Detectives had to explore the possibility that the combination of Deborah's own personal and medical issues, along with the responsibility of caring for a baby, had caused her to snap. Perhaps DeAsia's reality had truly become a mother's worst nightmare, and her own aunt had taken Janiah's life. I don't know, bro. <laughs> What the fuck? She stabbed her? Yeah. Do you know what she stabbed her with? The knife is next to the baby. Oh, the baby in her. The what? I'm sorry? Oh, the baby hand. So you went out there and saw. Yeah, your cock. No, no, I was hurting. She hadn't seen the infant's lifeless body. She'd heard Robert's little girl's blood curdling screams as the child entered the bloodied kitchen and word of the grisly scene soon made its way through the home. But clearly, things weren't quite adding up. 
how do we make that leap from the babies acting like a normal baby to the point where we end up where it is badly injured and dies in the kitchen? That, I don't know. You don't know? I guess when I had to sleep on Okay. Here's, here's where we're going to take a little turn. That's not what happened. Say I don't know, and 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 Auntie Deb 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 Deb. She I don't want her to fully get in trouble, so she she, she was sleepwalking, sleepwalking, sleepwalking. She was yeah. That's what I'm gonna tell him in the morning. That's what I'm gonna tell him tomorrow. Yes, that's that's it. The detectives have come to this meeting armed with indisputable evidence. Her to fuck up. At, at what point Not during all this did you have the knife in your hand? Of course, the detectives already know the answer to this question. They just need to hear it from DeAsia. I didn't have the knife in my hand. You didn't, you never had the knife in your hand, so you, those aren't your fingerprints that are on, no. on the knife in there? No. Are you sure about that? Yes. So if, if we pull that up and your fingerprints on that, yes. like, how am I going to explain that then? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My fingerprints just stay on there. They just stay on there? That's you know what I'm saying? My fingerprints are not on you. No, but I'm, I'm telling you that they are. I'm saying, how do I explain that? By checking it. By checking it? Why? We did check it. No, my fingerprints are not on you because I didn't touch it. Okay. Did you check it? Okay. Well, you're thinking that your aunt did it, right? Yeah. Even though she was completely asleep, had no blood on her, no blood on her hands. Mm. You. You still think she's the one that did it? Yeah, she sleepwalks. She sleepwalks? Yes. Wow. Do you sleepwalk at all? No. Wow. How could Bill and I explain all the blood and stuff that was all over you? Wow. Um, you don't know? Wow. Idiot. Idiot fuck. Yeah. Take a guess. How, what, do you, what do you think would be a good explanation? Um. At this point, the detectives are done entertaining DeAsia's absurd claims and denials. They employ some tactics that weren't successful me. last time around. Let's see. Do you know the difference between a bad person up. versus a bad thing, like doing a bad thing? Do you understand the difference? Yes. So there are people out there who are bad, okay? But there are people out there who aren't bad, who sometimes do bad things. A... Chat, are you bad or do you do bad things? Or is it... What's up? Talk to me. Are you a good person, chat? Or are you bad? Are you a bad boy? Are you a bad boy, chat? There's a big difference in that. And that's just what we're trying to find out. Do you think something was just going on that may have caused you to do this? Yes. What what do you think was going on? No, I'm just trying to take my baby. People were trying to take your baby from you and that upset you? Yes. They're cooking. Okay. Did that make you feel like if you did this to the baby, then nobody would take it away from you? I didn't do nothing to the baby. No, but no, detectives aren't up. yet able to you're overcome DeAsia's denials up. as she continues to claim that she didn't cause Janiah's death. They continue at it and try a different approach. I don't think you wanted anything bad to happen to the baby. I don't, I don't think that at all. You wouldn't have kept trying to stay there and be around the baby if you wanted something bad to happen to it. Okay, the baby. I keep hearing the baby. Am I, am I, am I, am I tripping? Do I keep hearing the baby or, or what? But you would agree that something very bad happened. Okay, and the, ba the baby is no longer with us and the baby's dead. The baby? Okay. But the manner in which the baby died was caused by somebody with very deep feelings, very strong feelings. There was a lot of angst in what was done. Somebody had very strong feelings towards that baby. Okay. And the person I find with the strongest feelings one way or other about that baby is you. You're the person that had the strongest connection. And what I'm trying to get to the bottom of what happened here, I think a big goal for the police is we want to know exactly what led up to this, what 
may have caused or what may have led you to react in such a way so that we can help somebody else from not doing it. If you could help another mother with the stuff that you were suffering from in the postpartum, wouldn't you want to do that? You know Aunt Debbie didn't do this. You don't want to blame it on Aunt Debbie. That's not going to help. Okay? Is he cooking that? I'm getting a little close there with the fact that you just don't want to believe you did it. How do you? Yeah. So, when you think about Janiah, how do you feel now? I feel real sad. Real sad? And disappointed. In what? Why do you feel disappointed? Why do you feel disappointed? Because I just lost my. And, and none of us in here doubt that you love her, okay? Just what? Just because of what happened, really? happened, that doesn't, that doesn't mean you didn't love her. I want you to tell me what made you upset that night. I doubt. What started all this? What happens that makes you upset? Nothing. Nothing upset you. Yeah. The detective directly confronts DeAsia with more evidence. How did you end up with all this blood on you? Don't say I don't know, bitch. When the police get there. Flex your ass. Um, you don't know? Yeah. Well, how would you explain it? If you were if you were the police detectives, how would you explain you with all the blood all over you? Um, Why there's blood all over your room where you were sleeping? Why your fingerprints are on the knife. I don't know. You don't know? No. What do you think we think when we see all that? That I killed him. That I was going to kill my daughter. The detective strategically transitions to the topic of DeAsia's loved ones, including James and her family, as he continues to build his case in hopes that something will trigger DeAsia to tell the truth. Do you do you still have feelings? You know what's crazy? If she go to jail, she's gonna be telling people like, "Yo, I I didn't do it. I got convicted for a crime I didn't do. My auntie killed my baby. They blaming me. I got framed and all type of shit." Telling this for James? Yeah. Do you know, you know what James asked about you? What? So when I talked to James, he said to me, "Can I go see her? Why you were at the DKS? And I said, "Well, at this point, we're not letting anybody." up there because people are concerned for your own safety from yourself and they're admiring you and, and then Bill and I were concerned because we didn't want anybody else up there talking to you yet. But he asked a bunch of times, can I go see her? I think I'm the only one that can help her. I think I'm the only one that can get her to open up. I think she'll feel comfortable talking to me. I was impressed with James because given the circumstances of what has happened, I'm not too sure that I would be asking questions about you. He was upset about Janiah, but he still was concerned about you. Mm. The rest of your family asked those same type of questions. Were you surprised to hear that James and your family was asking about you? Yes. Okay. And, and to be honest, I, I was surprised too. I thought they would be really, really mad at you. But do you know why they're not? Why? Because they don't think you're a bad person either. You cooking. They don't think you're a bad person. Good. We don't think you're a bad person. But we do think that you're responsible for a bad thing. And I'm not, I'm not going to sugarcoat that or lie to you. And all the evidence oh, and all up. the facts that we've, cook collect, up, Jerry. Cook that up, we've Jerry. collected and investigated goes right along the same line. At all points, to you all that bullshit up. Keep cooking. The detective explains that she needs to accept responsibility and deal with the consequences. And we need to move forward from that. Not just for the court stuff and for police stuff, but just for the family and everybody else. Aunt Debbie didn't do this sleepwalking, did she? Yeah. Oh my no, she God, didn't. he cooked it, he cooked it! What set this off? What happened? I, want, I do want to help you, but I want to help the other people too. The detective needs to uncover the spark that caused the massive explosion of violence. But Deasia reverts back to her original claim. I don't know. She just doesn't know. The other detective chimes in. Do you understand, um, Jake's trying to tell you that we're, you're not here because if you did it. We, we, don't, we, we know that this happened 
that you had that you had a part in this, okay? That you did this. We're just trying to. He's trying to figure out. We're all trying to figure out what was going on, how or why this happened. We know Aunt Debbie didn't do it. And you know that too. At what point? Once you got to the kitchen, what what happened once you got there? They said, "Bro, time, let the pro talk." Selling sold. Who let bro cook? He sell it. Asia provides a different answer, and it's unbelievable. She might have cooked. Wait, hold on, chat. She might not have sold. And at what point? Once you got to the kitchen, what what happened once you got there? This time, Deasia provides a different answer, and it's unbelievable. <laughs> With her admission less than 40 minutes into the interview, the denial cease. The ugly truth has finally been exposed. But it seems there's likely more to how this all came about. You recall the incident where the police were dispatched to the apartment as a result of cries and screams yes, coming thing. from within that night in late January. Well, as it turns out, it wasn't the first foreboding episode that had occurred within those walls. James shared some disturbing details with the caseworker at that initial meeting, shortly after DeAsia had been taken off to the hospital for an evaluation. Okay. The beginning of 2015, which marked Janiah's first month, brought along with it some changes in DeAsia. According to James, she began speaking regularly about religion. While that in itself wasn't a cause for alarm, it was out of character for DeAsia. Her unsettling behavior included claims that demons were present. There were times she'd be fine one moment, then uncontrollably crying the next. James had managed to capture the audio of one such occurrence, as he clutched Janiah in his arms, unsure of what else to do. He played the recording for the screener, and a hysterical Deasia could be heard screaming, Why God? Why me? What did I do wrong? Who are these demons? Please stop it. According to James, the incident, not unlike the one that occurred just hours earlier, was unprovoked and completely unexpected. That oh said, Deasia is now about to reveal her version of the slaying that ensued just days earlier, and she's poised to divulge every last nauseating detail. Please be advised that the following segment may be too graphic for some viewers. All right, chat. I can put y'all through that. Let's get on the game. Deasia starts at the beginning. I took Janiah. Should I change your nightmare? <laughs> he kept screaming and crying. I knew it. I knew it was gonna be something with screaming and crying, bro. I knew it was gonna be because because like, sometimes I'd be let me this is nowhere near the same, all right. But sometimes I'd be in situations, right, with puppies. They won't stop crying and 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 crying. And crying. I'd be thinking to myself, if I was insane in the fucking what would an insane person nope somebody that's not all there in the head doing a situation like this. Me, I'm, I'm perfectly saying I know what to do. I can handle it. I could deal with the screaming. It is what it is. But what would an insane person do? Someone who cannot handle shit. Like shit, thoughts like this always happen. Happen in my brain, bro. Chill. That's just reality, nigga. That's just reality. There's people who are insane with babies, my nigga. And I'd be thinking, what the fuck do they do in those situations, bro? Like, cause sometimes it's so fucking annoying. I'm like, bro, if I wasn't sane, like, what the hell? Should I change your nightmare? <laughs> he kept screaming and crying, and then I didn't get the changer, so I just threw across the room. Oh my god, that's the shit! I be mean, chat, bro. That shit is real, bro. Do you hear that shit? That's disgusting. Oh my god, that is gut wrenching. That is gut wrenching. Knowing how soft and fragile little babies are. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. He didn't die, so I walked over there. 
and then the and Oh my god. Then I it's look so for it hard. Then I'm pretty sure what I knew. He got to the big old stick. And he never hit for it hard. She was a bad master. Oh my fucking lord. Oh my god. That is oh my god. Bro. Oh my bro Jesus. Jesus Christ. Check the shit that be going on in this world, bro. The shit that she the worst be happening, bro. The worst that you can think of, that shit happens in this world, bro. Bro. Oh my god! Bro, no, 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 no. Oh my god. I went to school with a girl who did this to her friend's son? What? It's cutting. How many times did you cut to get her neck severed? Until it's sliced off. And once you started stabbing her, what made you think you needed to cut her head off after that? She wanted that. She wouldn't die? How do you know she wasn't dead? Because she kept breathing and... She kept what? Breathing and moving around. She kept breathing and moving around? Yes. Even after you were stabbing her? Yes. What did you do with the knife after that? I didn't Was there a reason that you did that? Yes. Why did you put it in her hand? Because it looked like she did it. I wish there was like something. I know this. I know this would separate a lot of humans or something. But I wish there was like a gauge that you could tell. I don't know when you're born, the IQ or the or the or the mental capacity that every human has, because some humans just don't deserve to breed, bro. And I wish we knew which humans were allowed to and and, and aren't allowed to, bro. Some humans sh just shouldn't be able to procreate, bro. That like like this human being shouldn't shouldn't have like bro. That is disgusting. So it would look like she did it. Yes. And then what did she do? This motherfucker needed to be neutered at birth. What the fuck? Hi. Not going. The Asia's revolting account is consistent with the evidence found at the scene. What made you do that? You don't know? Yes. Do you regret what you did? Do you feel bad about what you did to Janai? Yeah. Shit like this is why I be off social media sometimes, bro. This shit makes me want to punch something. That's the, that's the, that's the, that's the, that's the thing with social media chat. Social media? The internet, you literally, it could literally ruin your whole mindset. Like, it is disgusting. The news, all the, the reality, but at the end of the day, it's the reality of the world, bro. That's the shit that be that be going on around the world, bro. That's the shit that be going on that you never see. That's it's real life, bro. Like it's life. Ign yes, yes, knowledge. Ignorance is bliss, bro. It's bliss as fuck. Why don't I feel bad? Just um, Do you blame Janaya for something? No. What made you want to kill her? 
Harry and Donia. Do you think you could have just given her to James instead? Yes. I get in contact with him. Couldn't get in contact with him? Yeah. So James, how long before Robert showed up? A good 15. I'm sorry? A good 15. 15 minutes? Yes. Did you hear the little kids scream when they came in? They didn't even scream. The little girl said, the baby. So you, were, you heard all that? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. After catching a glimpse of baby Janiah in such an utterly brutalized state, Robert had to divert his eyes. What, what, what do you see when you look at the child? What look, 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 lady, I don't want to describe the scene. The screen is very, very bad, all right? The little lady, the little baby head is open, like okay. open, open. I, I'm, I'm not going in there to touch nothing because I don't want to mess nothing up. I'm not going in there to look because I already seen it, but it's not, it's very violent. It's a very violent scene. Uh, we're going to step out for a minute, okay? Were you able to tell anyone else about this? No. Okay. We'll be back in a minute, okay? Okay. Would you like something to drink or anything? No. Water or something? No. Okay. Detectives exit the room and don't return for any additional questioning. Less than 15 minutes later, DeAsia is headed for the Justice Center. DeAsia's account confirmed the Hamilton County Coroner's report. Baby Janiah had sustained stab wounds on both her face and head. When the coroner was asked if she could provide the number of stab wounds, she stated that she'd lost count. Janiah's right arm was fractured. In addition, her head had indeed been severed from her body, as DeAsia so callously described. According to the Hamilton County Prosecutor, Job and Family Services did their job. Nevertheless, the haunting case is one you likely can't wrap your head around, and the question of why really wasn't answered, at least not completely. DeAsia's initial plea in response to her aggravated murder charge was not guilty by reason of insanity, but the presiding judge ordered that she receive psychiatric treatment. It was later determined that she was competent to stand trial upon receiving the required treatment. However, a trial date never came. DeAsia Watkins pleaded guilty to the brutal murder of her own infant in February of 2017. She received a sentence of 15 years to life in prison, with the possibility of parole at 13 years, as she was given credit for the time she'd already spent in custody. Due to the monetization policies of this platform, we had to make a lot of cuts and heavily censor the content of our videos. With an entire team behind the creation of each video and the cost of obtaining exclusive footage, we cannot afford to produce demonetized content. Therefore, if you would like to see less censored versions of our videos... I am good, gang. I promise you, I don't need to see less censored version of this shit. You are good, gang. I'm not finishing that. GG's. Have fun with that. I don't need to see shit. I don't need to see shit. Shit. That is the worst case I've ever heard in my life. This was the most brutal shit I've ever heard in my life. I just gotta say shout out to the crime scene investigators that gotta go through looking at something like oh looking God. at all this and no then facts. clock out and live a normal life. I think I would lose my mind. 15 years to life, nigga. Just give, first of all, this, this thing isn't, bro, like, it's broken. Okay, it's sad, but it's broken. It is no, no longer a func functional, normal human. It is broken. It has no purpose here, bro. Yo, Killer, she needs to suffer? That is true, but at the same time, I don't even think she could feel suffering. I don't think she cares. I don't, there's, like, there's, there's like certain... I don't know, bro. The only suffering was torture. It's cool. <laughs> is this judge brain dead? How the fuck did child services do their fucking job? The moment the child life in danger that mother has no purpose as a caretaker anymore. Disgusting. Yep. They should have took that baby far, 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 far away Day from rage. that motherfucker. Sorry to darken the mood more, but my entire a baby? world really? has been destroyed. A baby? My dad passed away a few days ago, and I just wanted to thank you for all the entertainment you've given me for years. I don't know what's gonna happen to me, but why RG forever? We love you, bro. I am so sorry that I have all my- I'm sorry, Please bro. look up Blood Eagle Punishment, cause this we what the bitch you, need.
We got hundreds of thousands of motherfuckers you can talk to in this community, bro. I'm sorry. Sorry for your loss, bro. Said I'm on three plus right now, if I'm being honest. Hope my feelings shoot out like a rocket. Niggas thought they had the swag, but I'm really honest. Look at you just window shopping that new bag I bought.